Well, I think I'm going. I'm not sure. <clears throat> Good morning, guys. Welcome to uh, Sunday Youth Bible Study, North Park Church. I uh, hope everybody's doing well. Um, this week, we're going to be studying in Philemon. Short little book, just one chapter. Uh, we're going to read verses 8 through 22. So, uh, I hope you're ready to study. Get yourself your Bible. You might want a pen and uh, something to note things down. Uh, remember, you'll need to pause me whenever um, you need to ask a question or discuss something or pray about something. Um, you know, always just pause it and take a second to do that. Um, but with all that, we're going to go ahead and get into our study. I'll read over the passages. You follow along in your Bible. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll get into this. We're talking about Onesimus. Who had uh, he was Philemon's uh, slave, his bond servant, and uh, he had run off, and then uh, he met up with Paul, and during his time with Paul, uh, his life changed. Obviously, he uh, he had uh, put his trust in Christ. He had saving faith. He was a believer. He was following Christ, and uh, he was going to go back to Philemon. Paul was going to send him back. So it's a really really neat story. Um, you see a lot of things on display. You see Paul uh, really well displaying um, what Christ did. He uh, he intercedes for Onesimus, and and um, you know at the end of our story you'll see that he asks um, Philemon, you know, if if Onesimus owes him anything, to charge that to his account, um, that he will repay it. You know, that's a very Christ-like thing. That Paul does for Onesimus. Uh, you see that godly discipleship uh, really, really is effective. Um, it grows people up and it, and it really helps to affect change uh, the way God designed it to. Um, the way that God's effectual call works through uh, people is by really, really good dis discipleship, spiritual fatherhood, as you see Paul say. So, um, we'll get into this. The last thing you want to do with a section of scripture like this, though, is take the 21st century and see how you can change this to be a little bit more PC. We're not going to do that. Um, this letter isn't about social justice. This letter is not about poor Onesimus, the bond servant. Um... God's word doesn't address that. It it just doesn't it just it doesn't enter into it. You know we're gonna we're gonna say what God's word says about it, and uh, we're gonna get the point that God wanted to make, not what the 21st century wants to make. So let's read over Philemon verses eight through fourteen real quick here. For this reason, although I have great boldness in Christ to command you to do what is right. I appeal to you, instead, on the basis of love. I, Paul, as an elderly man now, also as a prisoner of Christ Jesus, appeal to you for my son, Onesimus. I became his father while I was in chains. Once he was useless to you, but now he is useful both to you and to me. I am sending him back to you. I am sending my very own heart. I wanted to keep him with me so that in my imprisonment for the gospel he might serve me in your place. But I didn't want to do anything without your consent, so that your good deed might not be out of obligation, but of your own free will. So Paul wrote this letter to Philemon, he was a church leader, regarding Onesimus, who was Philemon's servant, uh, who had run away. So since Philemon had last seen Onesimus, uh, his servant had become had come under Paul's discipleship. Like we were saying, he'd been transformed. Uh, we don't know much about Onesimus's past, um, but clearly uh, God's word refers to him as as useless. <laughs> he was he was useless to uh, his master Philemon. He w it clearly wasn't uh, good things that was going on. <laughs> um, whatever the situation was before, now. 
Onesimus was clearly a new man, changed by the gospel uh, through his relationship uh, with Christ, um, thanks to, to Paul's great leadership and guidance and teaching and all the things that he was doing with him. Now, Paul had apostolic authority, obviously, to demand that uh, Philemon just receive Onesimus as a brother and treat him graciously. <clears throat> but Paul took a different approach. He appealed to love. He knew that Philemon was also a faithful believer in Christ Jesus, that Philemon was a brother, and that um, because of that, because of his relationship with Christ, that um, he would have a love for the brothers, and he would be able to see that Onesimus was clearly really saved, and he would have a genuine care for him, just like the Word of God says over in 1 John. So if you look at verse 10, what was it that God used to bring a change in, Onis in Onesimus' life? It was obviously Paul, right? It was his spiritual mentor. So, do you have any um, spiritual mentors? Do you have people who are very godly role models in your life? And more than role models, people that will speak into your life, that will tell you the truth of God's word and grow you up, whether you like it or not. <laughs> because a good mentor is going to tell you things that you might not want to hear and will point out things in your life that are sinful without sugarcoating it for you so it doesn't hurt. A good spiritual mentor wants to see you grow in Christ. They want to see you grow. They want to see you become more Christ-like. And that takes more than just positive, nice words. So do you have any spiritual mentors in your life? If you do, praise God. You should be grateful. God places those people in your life so that you can grow to be more like Him, so that you can um, experience what it is to have great fellowship with God. So discipleship, it's, it's all about relationship. It's not merely just a transfer of information. but it's the development of a godly life. And that development is only possible through godly influences. And the investment in others, that's what's important. You know, you, you know, a mentor invests himself into, into you. All right, let's read over Philemon 15 through 17 now. For perhaps this is why he was separated from you for a brief time, so that you might get him back permanently, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, as a dearly loved brother. He is especially so to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. So if you consider me a partner, welcome him as you would me. And if he has wronged you in any way or owes you anything, charge that to my account. Oops, I went a verse too far. <clears throat> Paul preferred Onesimus to stay with him. But to do so would have robbed Philemon of Onesimus, whom he also needed, and... Uh, you know, this was a great opportunity for Philemon to demonstrate love. It was an opportunity for him to do that. 
Paul sends Onesimus back to Philemon with this personal letter in the hope that Philemon would see God's providential grace in his temporary loss. So in verse 16, we see that the life-altering implications of the gospel are on full display. Uh, in Christ, Philemon and Onesimus are brothers. Our heavenly identity, it takes precedence in our relationships. Our kingdom identity is uh, first and foremost. And that's not to say that Philemon wasn't in authority over Onesimus anymore. He absolutely was. He was. He was still Philemon. Um, he was still Onesimus's master. See, I uh, I follow Christ, and my boss also follows Christ. That makes us spiritual family, right? That doesn't mean that I get to not do what my boss says or not submit to the authorities that are placed over me. The authority remains. God has designed it to be so. And to not submit to authority because you're brothers is, it, it, it goes against what God's word teaches. It doesn't make sense that we would do something like that. So whatever authority God has placed over us remains and we relate to each other as brothers. Both things can take place. You know, um, my spiritual mentor, the guy I look up to, my spiritual father, um, we're great friends, but his role as spiritual authority, the one who has taught me, um, the servant is not greater than his master, <laughs> um, that doesn't change because we both believe in Jesus, I, I don't, you know, I, I still submit to the authority of the people over me because that is the way that God has designed it. That is, is pleasing to God to do such a thing. So we don't look to uh, change our, I hate this word, we don't look to change our social circumstances <laughs> because we're all saved now so we don't have to deal with that. I hope that all makes sense to you. I just want to make sure that that's super clear because, you know, God's word has said it to be so. But one thing that was certain, Onesimus was saved and him and Philemon could now relate to each other in a wonderful way. They were both brothers. They believed now in the same God. They followed the same God. They were saved. They now had an affection and a love for each other that was godly and from God. How sweet their relationship must have been after that, right? How good their fellowship would have been with each other, than, much more so than it was before. Now they're working towards the same goal. That's sweet fellowship. That's, that's the way that God had intended it. Let's read Philemon 18 through 22. <clears throat> if he has wronged you in any way or owes you anything, charge that to my account. I, Paul, write this with my own hand. I will repay it. Not to mention that you owe me your very self. Yes, brother, may I benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Since I am confident of your obedience, I am writing to you knowing that you will do even more than I say. Meanwhile, also prepare a guest room for me, since I hope that through your prayers I will be restored to you. Paul had such a confidence that Philemon would do the right thing. 
because he knew that Philemon was a faithful believer in Christ, that he was growing in Christ, that his identity was in Christ because God had saved Philemon. He had a confidence that Philemon would do the right thing. And yet he still says, if Philemon owes you anything, charge that to my account. Paul demonstrates what it's lo- demonstrates Christ's love in the canceling of debts and removing guilt. He was he was, he was taking Onesimus' place. It's a pretty amazing thing. So Paul obviously sees Philemon's temporary loss as a larger gain. He's getting back a brother, not just a bondservant. He's not just getting back his slave. He's getting back a brother, which is a much greater thing, right? But he doesn't want Philemon to feel taken advantage of or to carry on a grudge over some outstanding debt. Though, since Philemon is is saved, he wouldn't be doing that. Martin Luther said about this, Here we see how Paul lays himself out for poor Onesimus and with all his means pleads his cause with his master, and so sets himself as if he were Onesimus, and had himself done wrong to Philemon, even as Christ did for us with God the Father, though also thus also does Paul for Onesimus with Philemon. We are all Onesimi if we believe. And then Spurgeon had said, There is something so godlike in trying to put away discord and remove anger and to promote love that it makes men feel that peacemakers must be the children of God. That that is uh, that is the end of our lesson. Um, There's a lot to this um, passage that we've gone over. That brotherly love that you see from being a part of the family of God should take priority in your life if you claim to be a believer. It should be paramount that you love the brothers, that you love the family of God, that you love the church. It should be paramount. When Spurgeon's quote is amazing, that there's something so godlike in trying to put away discord, remove anger, promote love, that it makes men feel that peacemakers must be the children of God. They're going to know you're a Christian by the way that you love them. That's what will happen. Well, that's it for this week, guys. Uh, I hope that this is beneficial to you. I'm always praying uh, for you guys. And uh, I will catch you all next week.